Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley. If you are new, welcome. And if you're not new, thank you so much for coming back for another video on my channel. Yes, we have an edited video for you guys today. And in today's video, we're getting into the new Hollywood Flawless Eye Filter Luxury Palette from Charlotte Tilbury. And I have it in the shade or in the, you know, version Diva Lights. And this is what it's looking like. Okay, we've got a nice, you know, new design on the package. And then we have these four very, everyday shades and so we're gonna get into these two eye looks and my thoughts on the palette as well as a, as well as a few comparisons so if you're interested then definitely stay tuned also before you stay tuned if you would like my videos if you enjoy them certainly hit that subscribe button i talk about luxury makeup on my channel i do lives every week so if you enjoy watching live videos live content getting into that chat and that back and forth and definitely hit the subscribe button and um, if you enjoy this video certainly hit the like button i would greatly appreciate it now on to the review All right, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about this palette here. So this is a new formula from Charlotte Tilbury. Um, we've got a matte in here in that black formula and, and that black shade there. And then we have three more metallic shimmery type shades. And these are all supposed, these both, both of these formulas are supposed to be new to the Charlotte Tilbury line. She wants you to feel or look like you have a filter on your eyes with these formulas. I think the shades are very pretty. I think if the formula is very pretty as well. I enjoy the smoothness of the shadows when they lay down. You'll see that in the demonstration for the eyeshadow looks. They're very smooth, but you have that sparkle and that shine. And this, this palette in particular, for me, is very everyday friendly. So what I wanted to do when I did these looks was give you guys a little bit more of a smoky option. Uh, but it's not too smoky, which I think is due to the formula of that black matte. And then also more of like a daytime type look, but still give you that glam type of effect. If we're talking about the formula of the shadows, this matte black is not really intense. I find this black to be easy to work with. You're not going to get that intensity like you might expect from Pat McGrath's Extreme Black, for instance. I find this black to be more similar to, in formula, to the... Natasha Nona Black in her Biba palette or the Black in the Wayne Goss palette. And we're gonna get to some swatches to compare those in a bit. Uh, as far as the formula of the other shades are concerned, I mean, you're getting shine, you can see. You're getting some nice shine, you're getting some nice sparkle, but it's very finely milled and it's not that like metallic liquid metal type of effect that you would get from ABH. So it just depends on your preferences for formula, but I do think it's a nice formula. I think the shades perform very nicely on my lids when I use them in today's two looks and also when I use this uh, palette in one of my recent live videos. So if you want to see a first impression of if you want to see my first impression of when I opened the palette, when I first used it, then definitely check out my live video um, where I'm talking about the Charlotte Tilbury product. As far as the comparisons, when I did my first impression on my live video, I was looking and I was like, this looks like the Imperial Topaz palette from Wayne Goss. Look at this. It looks the same. Of course, we don't have the six shades, but... Come on now, except for these two shades here. If you ignore these two, it looks like we pretty much got the same palette. So, um, if this was, to, if you haven't picked this palette up and you know, you are interested in the color story, but you just haven't purchased it yet for whatever reason, maybe it's too much product, uh, maybe the palette's too big for you, um, you're not getting enough shine in these metallic shades that you might want, then I think this one would be a good option for you. Now we're gonna get into swatches. Let's get into the four swatches here. All right, so that's that bronze shade, the more champagne shade, the copper shade, and then the black. So as you can see, even though that swatch of that black looks, it looks a little patchy, 
swatch is, the swatch is not any indication of how the shade performs on the lids. It builds up nicely and I haven't had, I haven't had any issue with, with the blending. So don't look at that as an indication of performance. But let's check out the Wayne Goss shades. The four that I think are comparable, of course. All right, here we go again. Bronze there. Then next is gonna be the champagne. Next is gonna be the copper. And then next is the black. All right, you guys, so you can you see how similar these are? You can totally see that We've got the two copper shades here. Of course, the, not to thick you guys off. Okay, the one from Wayne Goss, this thing is focusing on my face, okay. This shade from Wayne Goss has a bit more orange to it. It's a bit warmer than this here, but as far as just the overall shades of these metallics versus these, you know, more shiny shades in the Wayne Goss palette, these are certainly more satin. There's not a lot of sparkle and shine in these. Um, they they work nicely, but they're just a different formula. If you prefer a more sparkle, you know, more sparkle, more shine to your to these types of shades, then I would go for the Charlotte Tilbury. I think these are similarly priced as well. As far as the blacks are concerned, the black in Wayne Goss's palette is a bit drier in just the feel of it. It's a lot more matte, of course, and then this one is just a softer formula. A bit, I won't say it's shiny but it's just not as a, it's not a dry it's not as dry as the Wayne Goss but you can see they look, kind of look similar as far as the intensity of the black now let's look at Biva now here is Biva massive palette <laughs> so I'm looking at the black which is called spots I'm thinking that's going to be more comparable than the Wayne as far as formula is concerned and then we've got a champagne here a little bit warmer of a champagne this one has a little bit more of like a a very slight hint of pink to it and then we've got a bronze shade here so we don't have anything that's like a metallic copper that's going to be comparable to the charlotte palette but we can see what these look like as well that's nice then we're going to do the two champagne shades wow So that Natasha is looking pretty shiny um, and it's just a really nice and smooth formula. I feel like they're a little, a little bit more, they have a little bit more substance to the feel of them. They're a little weightier and I don't want to say that in a negative way, like they're heavy on the lids. They're certainly not. Natasha's metallics are very beautiful, but I feel like these have a thinner feel to them they have a thinner feel to them and so they lay they're laying really smoothly on the lids those are the comparisons that readily come to mind if you have some different comparisons certainly let me know um on the in the comment section and maybe i can do some swatches and put them up on the community tab but you know are the shades in this palette by charlotte tilbury you know something extraordinary no, we have all these shades in our collection, certainly. But the formula is very nice. If you're just looking at this as a standalone, not comparing to other palettes, the formula is beautiful. The shadows are very smooth on the lids and it's gonna be a nice everyday palette for easy to travel with, very small, compact, and you know, no muss, no fuss. I like the palette. I'm happy that I picked it up. I'm looking forward to seeing what she does with this um, the Hollywood eye filter quad formula that she started here. I'm looking forward to seeing what she does with some other colors because she's released three of these. I only picked up this one. They all seem to be everyday type shades. So these are going to be your, you know, everyday type palettes. Okay. Easy to use. Very easy to use. Um, and I do like, I wanted to demonstrate for you guys on this eye that you don't have to use the black to color, to get a full look if you're somebody who like me likes to put a little bit of depth in that crease that bronze shade that's in this palette does that decently well it's not like you have to use the black which i think is very helpful and the formula of these shades allow them to 
be used more than just on the lid. You don't have to focus the um, only use the mat in the crease. You can use these others in the crease in your transition area and it's not going to be like anything garish or something like that. Let's get into the eye tutorials. All right, so for my first look, I went in with the black and what I appreciate about this black, once again, like I said in my review, is that it is very buildable. It's not overly intense. You can take your time and build it up to your desired intensity. And what I really enjoy about it is that it's easy to blend out. So I did not use a transition shade with this look. And you know what? It's it's great that it, that that black is the formula that it is because with it just being a quad you've only got four shades if there's not a transition shade in there it is imperative that you that she adds a formula that can build out on its own that you don't necessarily have to have a transition shade you know available in the quad what i like with a quad what i like with any eyeshadow palette is that it can be used on its own. To keep this more of a smoky type look, I went with the bronze shade and put that all over the lid on top of some glitter glue like I always do, you guys know, and made sure that my the bronze shade and the black blended out pretty nicely together, like they faded into each other real well. So that's really good. For the inner corner, I went with the copper shade. I think that popped really nicely. I did spray my brush to make sure that there was no fallout on my face. And for the lash line, the lower lash line, I did go in with ground control, or not ground control, extreme black eyeliner from Pat McGrath and blurred that out with a little bit of that black shadow on my lower lash line, probably to the, you know, first or the outer half of my lower lash line. And for my brow bone, took the champagne shade, popped that right on the arch of the brow and the look is complete with mascara and some extreme black eyeliner in the waterline. For the next eye, like I explained before, I wanted to see what I could do without the black shade in my crease. And so I used the bronze shade in my crease and it has some depth to it. If you're deeper than my skin tone, you're not gonna see that depth. So I'm thinking, you know, my skin tone and lighter, you have basically two options for your crease in, your, um, in this palette, but deeper, you're probably gonna have to just stick with the black. Um, and so I did put that in the outer V and into the crease, blended that out nicely. The formula blends out very easily into my transition area. Once again, for the lids, I went all over my lid with the champagne shade, laid down very nicely on top of my glitter glue. And to get more of a defined effect with this champagne shade, I did go in with a small brush, sprayed it, went into went into the powder, or went into the champagne shade, sprayed my brush just to make sure that I would get that defined effect. And, you know, did kind of like a reverse cut crease type look, you know, with the wet brush. And then at the end, I didn't want to add, I wanted to add something else to the look. So I went with my finger into the copper shade and just patted that on top between the bronze and the champagne shade, just to, you know, add a little bit more of a transition between the two shades. And I think that worked out very nicely. On my lower lash line, I have the bronze shade swept along my lower lash line. And on my brow bone, I put the copper shade just to see what that would look like on the brow bone. And it looks really nice. So it's not too orange to do that. It's not too orange for me to pop it into my brow bone, which is very, very good. So I like that I've got a couple options in this palette for my brow bone, a couple options for my um, crease, and then, you know, all the nice shades that you can put, or, you know, the nice shades you can put on the lid. Works out nicely. So this is a nice everyday palette. If you're considering this palette, I would say go for it. If you like the shades and you're looking for an everyday type shade or everyday type palette, easy to travel with, one and done, you know, one palette, you don't have to reach for anything else, at least if you're my skin tone. So I'm enjoying it. I like it and I'm looking forward to seeing what she comes out with in, you know, more of these 
this formula. But this, those are my opinions about the palette. I enjoyed it. If you have this palette, if you have some opinions on it, definitely leave them in the comment section below. I hope this video was helpful for you. And if it was, certainly give it a thumbs up. Let me know. And once again, if you not have if you have not done so already, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I do my next upload and when I do my live chats. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will be talking to you guys in my next video. Talk to you very, very soon. See ya. From Charlotte Tilbury and we are okay. How long was the lipstick there? That is really not. I put too much, girl. Yes. Good thing I have a mirror right there. That would have been embarrassing. <laughs>